Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round one. I'm very, very happy because I recently reached a thousand subscribers, which is quite amazing. It might be not so much uh, compared to other YouTubers, but still a lot. So thanks for subscribing. And let's see now today's game. This is Lila versus Komodo MC, game 82. And we have an English opening, which started with C4 and B6. B6 is not really the best move in this position, but believe it or not, it was played even by super GMs. This exact move order that we have in this game, knight C3 and bishop B7. So this is now the end of the book. And here, usually super GMs play D4, trying to make this bishop um, uh, trying to reduce the scope of this bishop and of course here white would love to play also d4 and have a magnificent control of the center so here ha black uh, has to do something about it you cannot allow white to take over the control like that for example a move like knight f6 already runs into e5 so and the knight doesn't have good square so black needs to stabilize the center so we have e5 now and this is great because uh, it controls d4, which is a hole now in, uh, in white's position. Unless white plays d4, trying to get rid of that hole. But this is not so great because after pawn takes and queen takes, black um, manages to, uh, to develop uh, with tempo. After queen back to d1, there's bishop c5. And uh, black has a, a good uh, control of some dark squares in white's camp. So this wouldn't be so great for, uh, for white. Instead of d4, we have uh, g3. Lila wants to fianchetto the bishop to g2, now that this pawn is on c4. We have bishop c5, bishop g2. And now in this position, GMs usually played knight c6, knight e7, even knight f6 or f5. But here Commodore MC went for a novelty. And he played here d6, not fearing that his bishop might uh, get trapped with b4. And actually here Lila played rook b1, cheekily trying to, to get that bishop. So we have knight c6 now, covering that square. And d3. And here now, of course, if white plays a3, then black has a5. And all is good. It's hard to attack that bishop. We have d3. But after a5, Lila still played a3 to have a control over the b4 square and now we have 97 and 92 both of them are trying to avoid placing those knights on the f5 in order to have uh, these breaks with f4 and f5 available this is especially important for black since um, there aren't many other breaks that are good for black both b5 and d5 are well under white's control so those breaks are not possible f5 is the only uh, chance for black to uh, semi-open at least uh, a file in order to activate the rooks so f5 is uh, black's idea and now we have queen d7 and after castles castles we have uh, king h1 here by lila in this position actually we transpose back to uh, to the game ralph mamedov versus jan elvis from 2015 there uh, mamedov played bishop d2 and then we had f5, pawn takes, and white uh, put his knight on e4. White eventually managed to win. In this one, in anticipation of f5, Lila played king h1 in order to unpin this pawn. And now after f5, of course, she played f4. She wants to challenge black on the f5. Otherwise, black might take here and then uh, create some kind of pressure on the f2 pawn. So we have f4. And now after king a jake we have e takes on f5, knight takes on f5, and now this knight and the bishop are eyeing the e3 square. And uh, in this position now Lila went for two bishops for a rook. And she played here b4, which forces a takes b, a takes b. And now if this bishop tries to remain on this diagonal, for example it goes to e3, then white has b5 chasing this knight away from here chasing this knight into a into a square where it doesn't want to be b7 is hanging so the knight either has to go to a5 or d8 
and uh, on a5 the knight would be pretty much sidelined and the knight really doesn't want to go backwards either but is forced because this bishop is hanging and now bishop takes on b7 it wouldn't be good because this allows this knight to come back to c5 and basically it would solve black's problems but instead of that now that this knight is uh, uh, disrupting the communication between these rooks Lila could think about taking here on e5 and then with g4 create some trouble on uh, on that rook on f8 since it's undefended so we can see how a move like knight e8 destabilizes black's position so Komodo MC really didn't want to go that route so instead he preferred to take on b4 but this now allows Lila to take this bishop and then take the bishop on b7 and she gave up a rook for for the bishop pair which is usually better but now we have rook a1 pinning this bishop and threatening knight e3 forking these two so what can Lila do here well she simply played bishop g2 here not minding knight e3 she could have taken here for example and placed this knight again into a pin but she just preferred to go bishop g2 and now after knight e3 forking queen and rook she decided to take out this knight and give up the queen wow so we have rook takes on d1 and now after rook takes on d1 we have a very interesting imbalance we have three minor pieces versus the queen and from material point of view that's pretty much equal they both um, worth about about nine pawns but uh, which one is better the three minor pieces or the queen depends on the position and here since lila won i guess the position favored the three minor pieces we have now queen g4 which not only attacks this knight but also plans h5 h4 trying to open up the white king we have bishop back h5 and now h3 pushing the queen back f takes on e5 d takes on e5 and now king h2 kmc continued with h4 and now we have pawn takes on h4 and rook d8 attacking this pawn on d3 and uh, here after bishop e4 defending the pawn we have queen h6 attacking on h4 and lila played here rook b1 she's attacking now this knight tries to to force it away in order to reduce the pressure on d3 and here lila was actually expecting fireworks with rook takes on d3 when she wanted to take on b4 and after rook takes here uh, she wanted to play rook a4 threatening mate on a8 and after king g8 she wanted to take here and now komodo mc could take back the piece with queen takes on c3 and the balance with uh, three pieces versus queen remains but this time now lila would have a, a rook instead of, um, of a minor piece and still black would be much better in this position than in the game continuation because now the white pawns are weaker and uh, it's less likely that white will be able to promote one of them in the game when white's pawns were, were much stronger but instead of rook takes on d3 kmc played here knight c2 and this move now made lila very very happy because uh, now this allows her to activate the rook with rook f1 she evaluates now this position at uh, plus 2.2 actually for uh, for her while kmc evaluates it as completely equal now the problem is that if the knight comes here then rook f3 is very good forcing the knight away again and if the knight goes to b4 to attack d3 again then rook f3 is very good with uh, lateral defense and the rook on f3 of course is much more active than on d1 it's much better to defend these weak pawns laterally than from behind the rook on f3 is much more active it, it can give checks on f8 it can invade into black's position on f7 it also defends uh, the king so it's much more active on f3 than it would be on d1 so instead of knight b4 though we have queen takes now on h4 and now after knight g3 we have g6 trying to take away these squares from the knight when uh, bishop takes on g6 would be a mistake because it would allow this rook to come to g8 
and KMC would have pressure down the G5. So taking that pawn is not good. This is shielding the white king on the G5 very, very nicely. So we have instead knight D5 attacking on C7, C6, but this gives up the pawn on B6, king G7 now, and now knight A4 intending to, to reroute the knight to c5 and then to e6 and here kmc now really has to to make a decision how to activate this rook because once this knight comes back black is just uh, minus a pawn and the white will be able to increase the pressure and maybe win another pawn so how can kmc activate their rook one idea is to play rook h8 to attack this pawn but then just simply bishop g2 and white is fine Another idea is to play rook b8 or rook a8 and try to, um, to come down to the second rank, of course, after the knight moves to c5. But Lila can just simply play rook f2 and even place this knight into a pin. That wouldn't be that effective. So um, KMC actually played here rook f8, trying to exchange the rooks, which would allow this knight maybe to come to e1. But Lila's rook is actually much more active than black's rook and lila played here rook b1 this rook has chances to to get active and uh, make threats while lila is doing a very good job in covering these entry points into uh, white's position e3 and e1 are also guarded so the knight can't approach either and um, kmc now played knight d4 trying to get into f3 and uh, that would be quite dangerous so lila decides to take out this knight now but after e takes on d4 f2 is suddenly available for the black rook and one idea is here rook b2 this would be an adequate defense of of f2 the the rook would remain active a move that lila has to avoid though is king g2 trying to cover f2 with the king this would be a big blunder because now after rook aj the white rook would be forced into a passive position on h1 to defend here and actually even more uh, black would get a very good uh, position now with queen g5 threatening to invade on d2 when uh, if lila would play rook f1 to dodge the check with rook f2 then after queen h6 she would be in a big big trouble because now h3 is hanging and uh, black would be actually better in this position but instead of king g2, as I mentioned, rook b2 would be a good defense, but Lila is not afraid, actually, of rook f2. And she played here knight c5, and now after rook f2 check, she played bishop back to g2, and all is fine in uh, Lila's world. This bishop is pinned, so trying to attack it with the queen would be a nice idea, but all the squares are, uh, are covered. Piling up on the knight on g3 is also not possible so um, the white king is safe we have rook a2 now rook f1 queen e7 and knight e4 rook a3 and now rook f3 to defend the spawn rook back to a2 king g1 queen b4 and now rook f2 now since the black rook is pretty active lila wants to to trade it down now we have this check and now bishop back to f1 the bishop is defending the spawn Rook takes on f2, knight takes on f2. And now with the rooks gone, KMC's only hope really is to uh, either find the perpetual or try to exchange all the pawns. Without the pawns, it would be impossible, of course, to, uh, to make the black king with three minor pieces versus the queen. But with the pawns on, Lila could uh, maybe capture one of these pawns and promote one of her pawns. That's the way to win for Lila. We have now king f6, king g2, queen c1. This bishop now is coming to uh, e4, where it would attack both black pawns. So we have king e7. This king is uh, defending now this pawn. And after bishop e4, the queen is defending the other one. We have now knight g4, queen d2 check, king f3, queen d1 check, king f4. And of course, Lila would love to, to pick up this pawn on g6. But the queen gives another check and forces the white king back. Queen e1 check, knight f1. So Lila now has to reorganize a bit her pieces in order to allow the king to advance. We have knight g4, king c7, king g3, and now there are no more checks. King h5 and finally progress with h4. 
And in this position now, KMC made a very, very good practical choice by playing G5 and exchanging these pawns. As I mentioned, this is uh, one way of getting a draw, exchange all the pawns. And G6 was a target anyway. And if uh, Lila would be able to pick this pawn up, then Harry would become a queen and would win the game for white. So G5, very good idea. The pawn exchange is forced and now Lila has to uh, target now the d4 and c6 pawns in order to create a passed pawn. We have knight h3, queen a5, king f4, queen d2 check, king f5 and Lila's king is going up the board. We have check and now king f4 and slowly Lila's king is trying to get to the d4 pawn. But we have queen d6 check forcing the king away, queen f8 check. King g6, queen e8 check, king h6, and after a series of checks, Lila is rerouting again her pieces in order to, um, to attack d4. This knight was now attacking d4, so c5 to defend the pawn, and now c5 is the new target for Lila. We have knight g4, queen d8 check, knight f6, king e7, and Lila is trying to somehow uh, attack this pawn. Knight g4, queen c7, bishop f5 check, and now the idea is to place this knight to e4 and uh, attack this pawn. We have king f7, knight e4, and the knight is in position, but as long as the queen defends this pawn, it's very difficult to get it. We have queen e7 check, king f4, king g7, knight e5. So Lila is trying to attack this pawn now with another piece, <clears throat> but it's very difficult to, to do that. And now after king h5, we have knight g5, queen b8, knight f7, king h4, bishop g4, and now suddenly the black king uh, doesn't have moves. So KMC is trying here queen d6, offering the queen in order to uh, get into a stalemated position. But Lila avoids that with king e4. Now the king can go to g3 and there are no stalemates. And what's more, Lila now is guaranteed to get into d5 with the king and attack c5 since uh, the queen is now attacked and all these squares are defended by uh, the white pieces the king will be able to get to d5 and attack c5 so we have now queen a6 king d5 and if now the checks continue then lila will just pick up these pawns so uh, one way to continue is to, to try to defend this pawn with the queen, but Lila will be able sooner or later to reroute uh, her pieces and get the pawn. So instead of actually defending the pawn, KMC tried now to improve his king with king g3 and king f4. And now we have bishop d7, king e3, king d5. And now since uh, the c5 pawn is gone, Lila's plan is to push the c pawn. Uh, we have queen a8 check, king e6, queen a3. And slowly Lila is uh, rerouting her pieces again in order to allow the c pawn to advance. And after knight d7, it looks like the red carpet is laid down and uh, the pawn can move forward. We have queen a2 pinning the pawn, but after king e7, this pawn can now march forward. We have king g3, uh, c5, queen a5, c6, and now after king f2 and king e6, the queen is blocking the pawn. And here now Lila either can try to unblock the pawn by placing the knight, let's say, to d5, or try to get the d4 pawn. And uh, Lila goes for the second idea. She's uh, first trying to get the pawn. We have a couple of more moves here. The king is approaching, but eventually Lila will uh, will get the pawn. And then uh, the king goes back to attack d4. And finally we have king takes. We have queen d6 check. King c4 now, king e3. And uh, now Lila is uh, rerouting again the knight. To, to d5 in order to support this pawn. We have now knight d5 and nothing can stop now again this pawn from going forward. Knight is in position. We have a check. 
queen a8, c7, queen c8, and Lila is planning bishop f5 here. So um, we have uh, d4 now, king d2, bishop f5, and uh, this pawn will become a queen. There's nothing the black queen can do about it. There's a check here, but after knight d3, there are no more checks, and the pawn goes in. So we have queen e4 instead, but of course Lila happily accepts the queen. King d1, and finally Lila manages to promote now to a queen. We have king c1, and now queen c7. And after king b2, we have queen d7. Lila is very, very happy for having a queen. She plays without a queen for so long. So she wants to celebrate now with a little mating uh, ritual here. You don't want to scare that king so fast. So we have a, this little mating ritual now. Uh, slowly, the queen is approaching on the h file. And now after queen h2 check and king a3, we have a sudden change of direction, completely confusing the black king, which now after king c3 and king a1, finally becomes mated on b2. What a game! A complete masterclass on how to move your minor pieces against your opponent's queen. I would like to thank to Barry Fortune for his uh, $10 contribution to my channel. And of course, I would also like to thank to René, Adolf, Marc, Gary, Guilherme, Sebastian, Todor and Radu for their support. Check out some of these videos on the right. Please subscribe, like and share. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.